when did this liquid source thing start? Because it always felt like Iron Man was receiving way more publicity and and. Liquid Swords was a nerd conversation that yeah. I just never really got into because I I listened to the album once, didn't like it, and moved on with my life. Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another Dead in Hip Hop video. Um, this time, man, we're gonna do a little something, something a little different. I think we kind of threw it out there before that we would, you know, talk about your super chats in some sort of form, and we came up with something. We're just gonna kind of do a, a mailbag of the super chats that you know we uh, get in every every other Wednesday. Um, we do a live show, um, so make sure you tap in every other Wednesday. We do a um, live show on Dead and Hip Hop. Um, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you ever want to do get Super Chats in there, we do them for the first 20 minutes of the show. Send those Super Chats in, and they'll either get answered on the show or they might be, uh, be in the mailbag like this. We'll see. But yeah, here with my bridges, with the, except B, to my right, got FIFO 24-7. What it do? To the right of him, we got Kenneth B. Inch. And to the right of him, we got Mike C-Town. Well, yeah, man, we're going to stop at the top, start at the top and work our way down. So one of the ones that's been in here for a while, I've seen in here for a while, um, is Billy Woods a pre approaching GOAT status? Mm. FIFO. Mm. I know you're not the biggest I'm not. Billy Wood fan, but I, I know you can't deny like where you've seen his name around mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Do you think he's a pre approaching um, GOAT status? I don't, I don't know GOAT status, but he's definitely leveling up, like, mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. When you have, um, what was it, uh, Rolling Stone, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, mentioning him, like, mm -hmm. that's huge. Yeah. That's super huge. So, again, I, I can't necessarily say GOAT status, but, mm -hmm. the, the, but the motherfucker, yeah, he, yeah. he, blow, he glowing up. I can kind of agree with that. I don't know if GOAT status is the right term here. Mm -hmm. I definitely can agree that he's leveling up. You know what I'm saying? He's getting a lot of mainstream, not just underground eyes mm -hmm. on him. So... I don't know if GOAT status is, I don't know if it's like Doom level, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, but he is, he definitely is getting his name out there like like crazy. Ken, what, what about you? What you feel? How if you feel? we're talking approaching, mm -hmm. um, then I would say, yeah. And mm -hmm. I think what Rolling Stone is kind of contributing to that. Mm -hmm. So we would have discussed this earlier this year before Rolling Stone. Mm -hmm. I think I still would have leaned yes, but I think now I'm definitely feeling strongly about it mm -hmm. um, because of that. Uh, and, you know, the discography is is a a plus. You know, we already know about the rhyming and everything else. And um, now with more and more eyeballs, approach, you know, paying attention and that exposure, yeah, I, I think he is definitely approaching GOAT status. You know, it doesn't feel like he's, he's slowly not becoming like um like a, a best kept secret mm -hmm. you know mike you got a face i don't know if it's for this or something else but it was good sorry it was something. a bubble game yeah it's a bubble oh game. lord you would <laughs> it, was, it was bubble pop ghost status is he yeah approaching? i think he's approaching ghost status i mm -hmm. do agree with y'all what y'all are saying though mm -hmm. it could just be people that are just kind of hot in the moment right now where it's like mm -hmm. billy woods is this kind of enigmatic rapper that to a lot of folks came out of nowhere mm -hmm. and just brought this really unique style that people weren't used to. So yeah, I mean, we could just give it as he's just one of the hottest rappers out right now, especially when you're talking about underground hip hop. GOAT status, I think it's hard if you're being objective to really throw him in that category. To frame the conversation a little bit is, is he approaching GOAT status in his arena, which is underground? Right. Like if we're talking like the masses and, you know, you're including little babies and Drake's and all of that type of stuff. Is he approaching goat status? No, I was talking about in his arena. I just think people are starting to use that term just so fucking loosely. You, you, that it's you know why? Ridiculous. Be, be, because now goat doesn't necessarily mean that there's one goat. There can right. be several yeah. goats. So that's kind of sort of where culture is taking the goat thing. Right. It's, you can have five goats. But then it's like, what's the point of being a goat anymore? Well, that's why they kind of transitioned to Mount Rushmore too. So they're trying to figure out mm -hmm. a way to like, oh, they're all goats on this mountain. Yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah. Be be because we always talk about how hip hop and sports kind of correlate to a degree, um, and sometimes it's hard to say that this is by far the number one person when it's like, well, this person's resume is damn near as good. That's why you just leave the goat shit alone. Just be like, hey, is he approaching being one of the best rappers? 
You know, it's like, oh, yeah. he's the greatest of all. It's just, it's like people who who use the word literally wrong. It's just like, oh I, my literally, God, bro. I literally, I <laughs> literally flew here. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh my God, you know, bro, I was thieves, driving bro. real fast. Oh. I literally, no, you didn't, dude. You didn't, you didn't literally fly here. You were driving. Oh it's just shit like that. It's just like, I yeah. don't know. It's, it's, it, it's semantic, sure. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm being pedantic as fuck. But I just kind of wonder how rappers actually feel about this shit. Like, how does Billy Woods feel about this conversation even happening? You know, he's like, can I just be a really fucking dope rapper? Why do I have to be talked about as a goat? You know what I mean? Certain things float different people's boats. You know, maybe he's one of those people that needs his ego stroked in that way i don't he doesn't seem like that I, i'm not i'm not saying that he is i know you yeah. said maybe i heard you yeah. but you know he it, just doesn't seem like the type that doesn't. cares he, about this type of because shit. he wouldn't have made the type of music that he makes if, if you know ding, what i'm ding, saying ding. so so i'm just throwing right. it out there for the sake of conversation right. but we never know because we are not these people right and you never know maybe deep down like he does like this attention that he's finally getting for being himself and being mentioned mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but i don't know all right well, we're gonna move to the next super chat i don't have no cl clever transition though <laughs> I like cow niggas. Why isn't Iron Man talked about like liquid swords? Um, I want to, for me, I know Iron Man and I know Mike wasn't here. And I wish B was here because I think mm -hmm. he really likes Iron Man. But uh, Iron Man was one of my, uh, what was the, what was the uh, video get called? Your, get your hip hop car pulled. Yeah, get my hip hop car revoked. Mm -hmm. And Iron Man was on my list. Why? Because you don't like Iron Man? I, I It's not, it's not. <laughs> Uh -oh. I think it's a little. I, I I don't like it as much as most people like it. Is what yeah. I think it's that, a little overrated. When somebody says talks highly, I'm like, oh yeah, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm gonna be the person in the room like, oh, it's cool. Sounds like you think it's overrated. <laughs> no, yeah. it's overrated. Trying to, trying to I'm, it like, down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, it's your opinion, right? Your saying? opinion is overrated. No, I'm just saying it's your opinion. I yeah. know it's, it's Harold and all of that, but for me, I probably would get my car pulled because mm -hmm. like, yo, you don't like Iron Man like mm -hmm. that. That's what it is. Well, here's what's funny. I'm in agreement with you. Oh, shit. I don't dislike the okay, album okay, at yeah. all. I yeah. think it's a great album. Yeah. I don't, I just don't really hold it the way I hold fucking- uh, Liquid Swords. Cuban Links, even Liquid Swords. Well, that's the one we're talking about. Yeah. I said why it's not like with Liquid Swords. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a classic, mm -hmm. sure. But as someone that came on hella late to Liquid Swords, mm -hmm. I like Liquid Swords more. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess my cards revoked too. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't need it. When did this Liquid Swords thing start? Because it always felt like Iron Man was receiving way more publicity and and Liquid Swords was a Swords. nerd conversation that yeah. I just never really got into because I I listened to the album once, didn't like it, and moved on with my life. But I can tell you right now, you go into backpacker nerd rap circles. Liquid Swords is going to be talked about probably more than Iron Man. But it seemed like it's it's been rising lately mm -hmm. among a lot of hip hop discourse over the last couple of years. Uh, probably getting to the point where it's is with Iron Man. So to me, it was always I would always see more people talking about Iron Man and less about Liquid Swords. Yeah, and I'm now sure you it did. Feels right. like it's flipped, which is kind of where we get the question. So so that's why I was a little bit confused about the question. I was like, when did outside of those circles, when did Liquid Swords become this great thing? You know? I think it depends again on what circle he runs with. I think that if you're running in that Boom. circle of nerdy ass dudes that love experimental off kilter rap, like a Billy Woods or shit like or an Aesop Rock or something like that, you're gonna talk more about Liquid Swords. I heard about Liquid Swords constantly. It's wild that it took B to be like, bro, you're tripping, it's good, go listen to it again. Mm -hmm. But I heard, but I, I would understand why you mm -hmm. would hear the opposite. You know, I don't fucking like Liquid Swords. So what's funny is on that same video, Liquid Swords was on my, um, you know, uh, joint to get my hip hop card revoked because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't like Liquid Swords. That won't get your card revoked. You, you know, um, I don't like the herky jerkiness of it, and I don't know why. You know, um, Iron Man is not at the level or beyond the level of Liquid Swords because for me it is. But again, I know what I like and what I don't like about hip hop, and Liquid Swords. I'm not gonna trash it because I don't think it's trash. I just it's not for me. I don't like. I don't personally mm -hmm. like it. So I don't know why people like it as much as they do. I think Ken's right. 
I, I think people already like Iron Man as much as they mm -hmm. like Liquid Swords. Yep. I think it's just a matter of well, group as man. the stuff like Billy Woods mm -hmm. and Earl yep. and Danny Brown has gotten more popular, people are now looking back at Liquid Swords being like, Same. oh shit, These are that all was the a babies. precursor. Mm. So I think that's really what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. Can't I, I can see that. Maybe they're just not talking about Iron Man as much anymore. Right, but exactly. It's, that's it what was, it is. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Can't hit it dead on the nose, like, yep. in my yeah. opinion. You could listen to Liquid Swords and see how many new babies that mm -hmm. is birthed versus Iron Man. Iron Man killed everything when it came out. So when it came just, out, yeah. But there's nobody in that Iron Man lane mm. right now that we could say all of Griselda. Mm. True, but but even Griselda is starting to. Mm, Damn, like, bro. I'm just. I love Griselda. Hey, there, there, there we go, FIFO. There we go, FIFO. Hey, there we go, Griselda falling, everybody, falling off. Everybody's run slows up bro. or dries up or just completely stopped. Now I'm not saying Griselda. Who's leading the pack? I'm not saying Griselda has stopped, Benny. but it's slowed up. It's slowing up. <laughs> All right. So who's driving the slowest? Damn. <laughs> mm. At this ne point, next one. Yeah. See, yeah, you scared. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, that's another conversation. He, he knows West Side comes from Atlanta. He's scared. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. He ain't ready for the boom, boom. I'm going to clip that, bro. People right. People saying Griselda falling off. Do you Damn. agree? Yeah. <laughs> no. I do. And they're slowing up. But yeah, man, we're going to keep this going, man. Shout out to the super chatters, man. Like we said, man, we try to get to your super chats one way or another, man. And this is. This particular uh, concept is kind of thrown around a lot in the Super Chats, I noticed, but uh, ranking rappers. Mm -hmm. um, this one in particular, they chose to pick Schoolboy Q, Mick Jenkins, Freddie Gibbs, and Earl Sweatshirt. So, so out of those, who hell? you're naming at like who, who who you naming as your greatest to your least greatest? Okay, you gotta start. You want me to start? Yeah, because you look all casual um, dropping it on us. Right, you go right, first. Right. No, I, I kind of thought about it. Um, out of these, my favorite one out of these is Mick Jenkins. Um, two would be Earl Sweatshirt. Three, I'm going to say Schoolboy. And I think Freddie's actually last for me on this Damn. particular list. So that, those are my those are my order right Damn. there. Yeah, I go last the best. Um, last will be Earl. Mm -hmm. Then give me Mick. Then give me Freddie. Then give me Schoolboy. Wow. Wait, you like Schoolboy over Freddie? I think um Cap. I <laughs> I personally like like more Freddie projects, but I think Schoolboy's the better rapper. Like if if we if huh. we if we're ranking the rappers, I'm not ranking the projects, I'm not ranking how much I like them. If I'm ranking their technical ability, I think Schoolboy is ahead of Freddie. As much as I love Freddie. Oh, if you rank the technical ability, you make Jenkins be first. For me, I'm going last. Uh, we'll start with Mid Jenkins, Freddie, Earl, and Schoolboy. Mm. Yeah, if I'm ranking technical ability, Freddie is last. Freddie, probably Schoolboy, Earl, and then Mick. For the record, I didn't do technical ability. I just did um, ranking in terms of my what I would listen to first. Oh, what was the question? I thought it was- It just says rank these rappers. Rank oh, I just went with what FIFO said. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I just straight. wanted to clear that up because I don't want anybody saying shit no, to me. No, uh, that's different then. <laughs> okay, then it, then it would be, it would be <laughs> Freddie. What are we starting? Back, back, to, back to front. Okay. It would be, um, I listen to Freddie the least. Unfortunately, it would probably be um, Mick Jenkins next. Mm. And, and that's on me. I don't know why I don't return to Mick Jenkins projects more. But yeah, it would be Freddie, Mick Jenkins, Schoolboy, and then Earl. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you gave us two two different two different there you ways. Go. <laughs> yeah, bang for your buck. <laughs> Moving on to the next one, man, that we didn't get a chance to get to until now. You know what I'm saying? We're getting the chance to get to him before the year's out. If hip hop, oh, oh, man, okay. <laughs> uh oh, man. If hip hop had a draft, who would you choose to build your label around? That's that's so so in basketball, football, and all that, Don Mike. You you typically go with a one person that you would kind of build your team around, like like mm -hmm. like, and it's usually like one of the best people that that's playing in the league or whatever. And then you pick people that compliment him. Yeah, people that compliment him, or okay. what, or he if he went to a team, he would make the team better. Like, who would that person be? And then to make it interesting, once that person is picked, you got to pick somebody else. I mean, I'm a nerd, so I would probably build it around Doom. 
I assume they can they can be passed. They don't yeah, have to yeah, be yeah, 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 yeah. I would probably start with Doom just because he's a rapper, he's a producer, and he's super creative. Mm. And he probably wouldn't tell people like, oh, yeah, you can't do shit this way. Do whatever yeah. you want. I like that. Well, I'm glad I'm next because I'm going with Kendrick. I figured. That's yep. what's up. Oh, do you think that'll work? Yeah, absolutely. It's working now. You think it's working now? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yep. Oh, ah. <laughs> How was it? How was it? Ah. I don't know. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? I, I don't know if it's working. What? We'll see. It, it, we'll see. It, it's still early. Know. It's still early. It's still early. Give me uh, do right and kill everything. I'm confused. Give me Drake. <laughs> Give you Drake. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you can't. Uh, ah, Kendrick. If you pick Drake, <laughs> why? What do you mean? Who you, does? Who does Drake have that Kendrick doesn't? What do you mean? Who does Drake have? You okay? So the I from what I'm understanding, the idea is you pick a person uh -huh. and then you pick people that will complement that person, and that person is basically running the label, right? N not running. No, you're running the label. You're just picking the star player first, right? So why okay. would you ah Kendrick? But then you pick Drake. No, just to what he was saying. Like, is it working now? That's why I was saying ah oh, to that part. Oh, not to Kendrick. Oh. Of course, Kendrick is one of the oh. best people to pick. Okay. But okay. then when he said, "Is it working?" Gotcha. Ah, I don't know if it is. Gotcha. 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 So that's gotcha. that's where my thing came from. I get you. Now the reason yep. why I'm picking Drake is because it don't matter who else I pick, it's gonna be a hit. We put Drake on the hook. We put Drake on the verse. We put Drake anywhere on top of your shit, and it's gonna do numbers. Now we give you the rod question: Is it working now? Uh yeah. Any better than Kendrick? No, it's not. Well, ah. <laughs> well, first, of all, first of all, he's not he's not tied to any other rapper or label now. Like he's a free he's he's his own entity, OVO. So you think Drake kidding you, you could build a label around Drake? Yeah. But you can't do it about but I didn't say that. Oh yeah. I didn't, you didn't say that. I went right I back to it. You're right. You're right. You didn't say that. I'm sorry. MF, Kendrick, and Drake are off the table. You know. He going Lupe. You, you didn't even know me, man. <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to go. You thought I was going to go. Fucking Jay-Z. No. It, 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 not at 40 Why something. Why is that crazy? Not at 50 something. I mean. I don't know. I, I think that's two, like two I mean, years. <laughs> He's around. He won an album. <laughs> like, they already did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's that's an easy one. They already did it. They already built a label around Jay. No, nah, I would do Lupe. I, I could see people being inspired by Lupe and creating that type of music. I, I think I think people are inspired by Lupe and create music. So I mm. think it'd be cool to build a, a label around Lupe. That'd be good. And, and Drake is around my age. I wasn't thinking about Drake's age. Drake seems young. Lupe seems, seems, for young. some reason, seems like he's... I'm not looking Because he's more wise. He's like, like, probably 30. Watch. Nah. He's about, he about, he about my age. He's like late like, 30s, early 40s. <sighs> he's probably early and, 40s. And, and Drake is late 30s. Yeah. Like, he's not my age. It ain't know, nobody yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Moving on to another super chat. We're almost done. Um, we kind of touched on it, and, and y'all can remind me after I after I say this. But will diversity return to hip hop? And we talked about that with uh, Kevin Powell. Yeah, mm -hmm. we kind of talked about the, will diversity return to hip. Uh, yeah, uh, return to hip hop. Um, so, what's your opinion? Do you think with diversity with or or it, or is it still diverse? I, I think hip hop is diverse. I think mm -hmm. that I think. What we look at is, is it a level playing field for all of hip hop? And mm -hmm. it's not. And I think for as long as we've been doing that in hip hop, I've always said that the radio is still one of the biggest ways of consuming music, especially for the Fairweather fan that's not tapped in. Mm -hmm. Right? Like if I'm not always looking for something or particular people that I like, if when I cut something on, I feel like this is what hip hop is. Mm -hmm. And the diversity is not on the radio. The hip hop has always been diverse. It will always continue to be diverse, but it's not on the radio. Why is Billy Woods not on the radio? He could get a Rolling Stones article, but he can't get. Why is there not a radio station that caters to that hip hop? There are. How many? They're just not. There's. They're not popular radio stations. There's not ad money and all that shit going at them. My thing is this: Atlanta has one. Yeah, yeah, eighty-eight point five. Yeah, we, we went to it. Yeah. You talking about WRFG? Nope. She can, well, they are. That's one too. I know, but, but the one you talking about is WRFG. What he's talking about? You is ain't not tapped that. in. Mm. Well, hey, you got to tap tap. You say hey, you're you not know what? Look, I will buy and stream what I like. So mm -hmm. for me, you know, again, it's 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 the radio that has to change. Not not hip hop. Hip, hip hop is fine. I think it's how people get put on to shit is why the there is no diversity in hip hop is an argument. Cool. Or Will diversity return to hip hop? Uh, it feels like it's a little bit more diverse than it has been mm -hmm. uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. 
But will it return all the way? I, I, I don't think so. I think music and hip hop will, you know, continue to just follow trends. I think one of the most diverse things that's happened right now is the women in hip hop. It's never been like this. I, I don't. I can't recall it being this many women like kind of controlling the airwaves. Like, like I think it's dope. Um, so I, I think that alone shows the diversity right now better mm -hmm. more than ever. Um, now, as far as like you know the type of music, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like. I just don't know. What I don't do you know mean? if that like, will return. You're talking about diversity with women in hip hop, and I agree. Mm -hmm. But you have Sexy Red and you got Che Noir. Like, they're on two completely opposite ends of the spectrum. I'm just saying. But only like, one of them is really popular, though. Like, radio, especially. I mm -hmm. agree. I don't disagree. So, But diversity means that there's a spectrum of stuff, right? If, if we're looking at it that way, then that means hip hop has always been diverse and this should have never been a discussion. Right. I think he's talking about diversity in what's extremely popular yes. right now. And I think that's where the discussion is because as much as I love Shay Noir, she's not on the radio. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. She's not, she doesn't have a whole bunch of little children Mm -hmm. You know, creating TikToks out of one of her songs. I don't like, not that I saw at least. I'm not on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But is that a Che Noir uh, issue? Is that a hip hop issue, or is that who controls the radio station issue? It was not an issue for Che Noir because she's doing what she wants right. mm -hmm. and she's very successful at it. Mm -hmm. It's an if you're looking at it as an issue, then it would have to be a hip hop issue because hip hop as a culture is promoting one thing over the other. Like who controls what gets programmed? The man. Hip hip hop doesn't control it. <laughs> what do you mean hip hop doesn't control it? Hip hop, like the programmers on mm -hmm. these radio stations aren't, mm -hmm. it's not KRS. KRS is, why isn't KRS a programmer of a radio station? Why the hell are you bringing up KRS? I'm he just ain't saying, been, what? I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, right, just yeah, whoever. Yeah, you take, you're taking this way too deep. This, that's a whole nother day. <laughs> my I'm just what? It, it, is diversity, yeah, bro. where is Melly Mel? <laughs> Will the diversity return to hip hop or do you feel yeah, like it's one, like, ever left or whatever? I know. I actually agree with FIFO. I think it's there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of it's not promoted. I think there's plenty of diversity in hip hop, but it's just a matter of how hard are you willing to look for it? Mm -hmm. I think when we're talking about at least the Kevin Powell article, it's more so an issue of what is being hardcore promoted to the masses. And it's not the conscious stuff for the most part. You can say Kendrick, sure, but outside of Kendrick, who else? J. Cole. He's, you know, he's, a, he's and J. an anomaly. Cole, thank you, and J. Cole, you're right, you're right, you're right. But on the, on the average, that's not what's being promoted. Mm -mm. It's the other shit that's being promoted. Yeah. Will that change? No time soon. Yeah. Even though kids and younger teens and whatever um, are becoming more aware and more conscious, but then there's still that wave of kids that are just like, look, I just want to listen to escapism right quick. I don't the vibe. Want, yeah, I want, yeah, I want the vibe. I want the wavy shit. I don't want somebody fucking <laughs> preaching at me. <laughs> no, is that old? I don't know. No, uh, just... But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if that's going to return because I get it. I get why kids wouldn't want to listen to uh, J. Cole preaching at them. I get why they wouldn't want to listen to Kendrick preaching at them. They want to fucking just have fun. Wh wh why would fun go away? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kendrick's not fun. J. Yeah, Cole's not time. fun. I love those guys. They're not fun. No, but they have fun moments. It, it, the moments are few and far between. I don't yeah. disagree. I don't disagree. All right, I'm going to stop there. Like, we know. We, we got it. Mm -hmm. All right, man. The last one, man. Like, we finally get into y'all Super Chats, man. He's been sitting for a while. So if it was yours, we finally got to it. You're welcome. Your favorite rapper. I hate you. What was the lyrical <laughs> peak of your favorite rapper? First, let's, let's start with this. Who's your favorite rapper, Mike? Someday and you'll have to set a peak. Yeah, there are a couple of favorite rappers. So well, I guess well, we well, which to one, pick which, one. Whichever one you want to pick. Which one would you pick? Some days it's Doom, some days it's LP. I'm going to go with Doom You're for gonna now. You're going to go with Doom. Okay. Yes. Ken, who's your favorite rapper you're going with For today? this discussion, I'm going to run with Scarface. Scarface. Jay. You're going to go with Jay? Mm -hmm. God damn it. <laughs> you can pick Jay because uh, yeah, the lyrical peaks yeah, are going to be right. different. That might make it interesting. Okay. All right. I'll pick Jay as well. Mine is interesting because I was trying to go back and look. Mm -hmm. But but my favorite album is Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. So his inception is the peak for me. Like like mm -hmm. like this first album, which it came out in '96, mm -hmm. is the peak for me. But I will say that in 2020, when he did the written testimony with Jay Electronica, mm -hmm. that was that was peak Jay in my opinion. He did some mm -hmm. really interesting stuff on that album. What he was doing lyrically on that album in 2020 was was dope. But ultimately, I think 
you know, I have to go with 96 when he when he came in, when he came in the door, mm. man. Like, he did some really cool stuff on All Reasonable Doubt. He did, and I think um, in one of those Jay documentaries, he talked mm. about how, like, that's his most wordy album. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I don't necessarily disagree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my favorite album is the Black album, but I don't necessarily think that that that's was a lyrical, lyrical peak. peak. I think the blueprint was his lyrical peak. I, I thought about that. I, I think I think the blueprint is kind of where. And what year was that? Two thousand one. Okay. So it was like what two years, three years before uh, Black mm. Album. I, I just feel like that's where his ability and everything else just kind of like hit the it crossed past at the at the very top. Mm -hmm. So to me, I got to pick Blueprint. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Two thousand one Blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, you say you going Scarface? I think I'm gonna go with ninety four with the diary. Mm. Mm. That's um, a good year. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. I think that is the one. I was looking at um, a couple of three, a uh, couple of his albums during that mm -hmm. that late nineties run. But I think I'm gonna go with the Diary as as the year for me. Got you. Did you say LP or Doom? I said I'm going with Doom. Okay. So which which one? Which year? Which <laughs> album? Got which a lot year? of two thousand four. Two thousand four. Because that's that's when he did mm Food. Mm -hmm. And he did Mad Villainy. Mm. Um, and he did a Victor Vaughn album all in the same year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And all of those are fucking lyrically ridiculous. I would go 2004. I think that was the year that he was, not to sound disrespectful or weird, but I think that was the year that it seemed like he was working the hardest. Mm -hmm. Where he was just like, I'm trying to get out as much fucking dope shit as possible. And I remember that year and it was like, okay, cool. We got one. Then mm -hmm. it was like, okay, a few months later, we got another one. It's like, gotcha. okay, what the fuck are you doing? Then we have a third one. It's like, are you serious? He was like alchemist now, you know what I'm saying? Back then where it's like, dude, chill out. Yeah, man, I think there's more, um, but we'll do another one of these. But yeah, these, 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 were of the, mm -hmm. these, these were some of the, these were some of the older ones that we just hadn't gotten gotten around to. Isaiah's been pushing it. So thank him, man, because thank yeah, he's, he's really been pushing us to get these uh, Super Chats done. So shout out to Isaiah Psh. for pushing us to get these done. And yeah, man, shout out to y'all for sending in the Super Chats. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, man, it definitely, like I say on the live, it definitely helps supports our show. So we just want to make sure we're we're giving back to you and, and answering those questions because we do take you seriously. Uh, so yeah, thank you for tuning in on those uh, Wednesday nights at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, man, we're, we're going to be uh, coming back next year. Next year strong with the uh, with the uh, lives, man. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Same As of right now, it'll probably be the same, same um, bi-weekly Wednesday at 9 p.m., but we'll let you know for sure. But yeah, man, thank you all for sending the Super Chats. And this was the first uh, Super Chat mailbag. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>